Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to the platform. On this program, we examine national and international issues and on the program today, we are going to be talking about the global economy, which is in crisis. And the economy is in crisis not only in the Bahamas, but around the world. Dr. Robert P. Murphy is our guest on the program today. He has a PhD in economics from New York University. He has taught at Hillsdale College and is now an economist at the Institute for Energy Research. He has written two books, uh, one on the politically incorrect guide to capitalism and the politically incorrect guide to the Great Depression. Um, he is here in the Bahamas as a guest of the Nassau Institute and it is our pleasure to have him on our program today. Dr. Murphy, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Godfrey Ennis is here as usual. Thank nice you. Nice to have you here, Mr. Ennis. Thank you. Dr. Murphy, um, you had an interesting discussion, we understand. Uh, a number of Bahamians turned out to uh, hear you speak. How was the event? I think it went pretty well. Uh, the message was depressing, no pun intended. I, I was here to say that I think what the U.S. government is doing and the Federal Reserve are doing is the same type of policies they did back in the 30s. And so the last time they did these things, we had a depression for 10 years. So I think uh, you know, people in the Bahamas, if, if they're expecting the United States economy to turn around soon, that, that they really should come up with a different strategy. That that's, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Well, we, we've heard um, many economists in the United States uh, say what caused the uh, recession now. Is it uh, still a recession or is it nearing a depression? Well, that's a, a tough question. I mean, I think it's just a matter of a difference of degree. I think f for sure what's happening right now is the worst recession since the early 80s. And I, I think if things continue to play out the way I expect they will, people will look back and say this was the worst depression since the great one. So you anticipated depression? Um, I, yeah, I think, I don't think unemployment's going to get as high as it did during the 1930s, at least in the United States. But I do think that this will be, the U.S. economy will be in trouble for five, six years. Uh, we understand as we speak that uh, unemployment figures uh, improved um, today, as a matter of fact. Um, is that encouraging to you? Well, obviously that particular fact by itself is encouraging, but I mean, all the different things that the government has done recently, all the different sectors of the U.S. economy that they've taken over or at least heavily intervened in, I, I don't think that that bodes well for the future. And so, yes, it, it is true that there was a slight you know, uptick um, in some of those figures, but I, I think the general trend is going to continue to go down. I mean, a lot of people in 1930 thought things were turning up. The stock market recovered a lot of the value it lost after the 29 crash, but as we know, you know that was a that was an illusion. That it was just a slight uptick, and then things continued to go down. The chairman of the Federal Reserve, um, Bernanke, and uh, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, uh, he they are both suggesting that what they did had to be done, and if they didn't do it, um, the situation would have been worse off. Right, and I, I understand, and I, I understand it would be, had they done nothing, things would have been awful. Mm. But I think they would have been awful for about three or four months, and then we would have been over that by now. Whereas what they've done is they've locked in place the same unsustainable conditions, I think, that prevailed during the boom. Because I think what happened is you had this housing boom, and Americans were consuming too much, you know, they thought they were getting richer because their houses were getting more expensive and their stock portfolios were rising, but that was an illusion. So they weren't saving enough, and they were, you know, importing from China and other places, and that couldn't continue. And so I think the way you fix that is the government should have let interest rates rise and let Americans cut back on consumption. And that's the exact opposite of what the government's done. They've pushed interest rates down to zero, and they're doing everything they can to get people to just go out and spend, and I think that's the wrong philosophy. Okay, Godfrey? But Dr. Murphy, some economists say that this dilemma stemmed from a convergence of different factors. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that, that, that approach, that this convergence created this mass global debacle? I certainly agree that there were several things that all came together that, you know, the cliche is it was a perfect storm. Yeah. So, I mean, the particular things that I think were most responsible would be the Federal Reserve under uh, Chairman Greenspan, so the, the current, or excuse me, the former chairman, he, after the dot-com crash and the 9-11 attacks, he brought interest rates way down to stimulate the economy because he didn't want to have a bad recession 
back then in 2001, 2002. And at the time, people were calling him the maestro, saying, oh, he spared us, but that sowed the seeds for the housing boom. And so I think if we do that again this time, which we are doing, we, this particular recession might not be as bad as it otherwise would be, but I think five <laughs> years from now, we're going to look back and say we should have just you know, had the recession at that point instead of now we're in a, in a worse fix. So we can keep postponing the inevitable, but it keeps getting worse and worse when they don't let Americans just realize we need to cut back our consumption and save more. But this is, you know, you take AIG, the situation with AIG becoming the, the largest reinsurer of mm -hmm. the world, you know. And so if the government didn't step in, nobody else could because nobody else has the kind of resources to, to uh, uh, create a situation of harmony in the world other than the U.S. government. Well, it's certainly true that it, they would have taken the U.S. federal government to step in, but I think they should have just let AIG fail. And that would have been painful, but the point was, you know, part of what happened in this crazy housing boom was you had all of these Wall Street banks and investment houses <laughs> were advancing loans to people and, and, and signing off on uh, mortgage-backed securities that they shouldn't have. But if you had, if, so if, they need to go out of business. To, if, to, they, if AIG had failed, mm -hmm. you would have had pandemonium all over, you know, all over Latin America and Europe and Africa. The economies would have just collapsed. That's true, but the, what, what's, what I'm saying to you is I predict we're still going to have that. I don't know exactly when, but they haven't. In other words, they don't fix the problem by just borrowing trillions of dollars and giving it to the same people who made all these horrible decisions. And so I think the way you get around that is you let those people that made those bad decisions go out of business. It would be awful for a few months, but then you have a solid foundation, whereas now they've just paid off the people. I mean, American taxpayers now have bailed out all of these rich people on Wall Street and I think you still have this shaky system that could collapse at any moment if there's a loss of confidence. But there's no doubt, uh, Mr. Dr. Murphy, that uh, the U.S. economy right now uh, is sh showing signs of improvement. The, it's true. The particular short-term indicators, they are better now than they were the last several months. But again, I, I just think that that's misleading. We won't know for sure. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think at the end of this year, looking back, we'll realize that people right now who are saying they think the worst is over, I think that that's, they're going to be mistaken. Disabuse the economists who are watching this program this evening that you are not a cynic. <laughs> um, well, I guess it depends what you mean by a cynic. Um, I, well, you are suggesting that uh, we, we uh, could have a depression. Uh, you are su suggesting that uh, the situation is going to get worse. Right, and the, the reason for that, though, it's, it's not that I'm eternally gloomy, but uh, doing research for my book on the Depression, it really struck me how the same policies we're doing now were the ones that they did back in the 30s, that you had a boom in the stock market fueled by low interest rates in the late 1920s, and then when that crashed, first the Hoover administration, and, and then even more so the Roosevelt administration, they tried to, to bail out the banks, they tried to prop up spending, they tried to boost uh, you know, aggregate demand, all the things that we're, they're doing now. They cut interest rates down uh, to very low levels, and it, things didn't improve because I think it didn't address the fundamental problem, which was that Americans had, had squandered a lot of their, their capital structure. They didn't save enough. But Dr. Murphy, in, in the Great Depression, you had 10 years of bad economy, mm -hmm. and then the U.S. went into the Second World War. In this situation, you have this bad economy in conjunction with two major wars. Isn't that a, 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 a big difference there? Because it seems as if Americans want to fight these two, 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 two big wars without any financial sacrifice. How do you uh, square that? Well, I, I think you're going along with, with my point is, and I understand, so there are some economists who say it was World War II that got the U.S. out of the Depression, but, but I don't agree with that.